Welcome back. Next up is Dennis from Digimondo, and they're going to tell you everything around Smart City and LoRaWAN. Hello, everybody. I am Dennis Kolberg, and I'm Chief Product Officer at Digimondo. And today I want to talk with you about the role of the digital twin for IoT and especially LoRaWAN. Well, why is this question relevant to think about the digital twin today? After being seven years in IoT, I noticed two things um, especially. First of all, LoRaWAN, maturity of LoRaWAN itself. You remember the time when LoRaWAN was new and not that many, that many devices exist. There was a lot of technical playing around to figure out how it works and get it run. Nowadays, we have a really good maturity for LoRaWAN. Uh, professional uh, projects are possible. We have a lot of devices, very mature software, and actually it's time to use LoRaWAN in rollout projects. Nevertheless, I also noticed that a lot of organizations and businesses, that they are somehow struggling in innovation projects, proof of concepts, and never really managed to do the step out of a proof of concept into a large, broad rollout. And that made us think at Digimondo and ask ourselves, why is it like this professional technology, but little rollouts? Why, why is it not working out yet? And we came to the conclusion that actually, without the digital twin, large, the large adoption of IoT in businesses will fail. That's quite surprising because if you ask companies and organizations, almost 90% of them still believe and think that IoT is a game-changing technology to them. That's really a high number. Nevertheless, <clears throat> more than 75% of all projects in IoT fail. They never manage to do the step out of a proof of concept into a large rollout. This huge idea, this great idea we once had of smart cities, smart factories, and ubiquitous computing everywhere IoT, somehow, even after a few years, it's still not working out. And the question, of course, is why? Companies still believe in the technology, but somehow they don't manage to do this big transition. There are many reasons, and I think you will uh, have noticed in your, your time and your work, daily work, uh, a few of them. Um, the one is more from the technical side, from the IoT experts, and I guess most of you are IoT experts uh, who are aware how to use the technology, how to work with it. And I think most of you will agree if I say, well, doing a POC in an isolated environment is pretty easy. But as soon as you go into rollout, you need to integrate into existing IT landscapes. You need to integrate, communicate, exchange data with existing systems. And it's not only about delivering IoT devices data to other systems. It's also about enriching this data. You need the sensors data as well as the order number or the location of a, a building or whatever. So it's about different interfaces, different data models, bringing them together to really do a rollout and be, uh, bring benefits to companies. Second of all, this complexity is not only about IT integration, it's also given in the IoT world itself. LoRaWAN is a really great technology, I love it, but I think you all agree if I say there are also other technologies and depending on your use case and your environment, you maybe even prefer something else than LoRaWAN, think about narrowband IoT or whatever else. We have to admit LoRaWAN is really great, but it has its uh, downsides and some use cases and other technologies also need to be used. And a business user, a business organization will never say, oh, well, I keep all these promising use cases away. Uh, I don't realize them because I only want to use LoRaWAN. No, they want to use it all. And that's why we have to integrate all of these technologies in one platform. And the third point is, Doing a POC in a limited time, pretty easy, but think about rollouts when a system needs to run five or 10 years. Exchanging the battery of a LoRaWAN device, pretty easy, but what if it breaks down, you need to exchange it, and then the struggle begins. You have in your database a lot of data from the one device, let's say with the ID 13, and suddenly it's stolen, you need to replace it by another device with the ID 15. And then you need to figure out a way how to combine these historical data from two different devices in one point, because the use case is still the same, but the device has changed. But when it comes to rollout, there's also another user we are often forgetting in our POCs, and that's actually the business users. 
the business users in a POC project, they are not that present uh, yet, but in a rollout, they are our customers. They are our users. These are the people for whom we are building up these solutions. And of course, they want to have use cases and IoT solutions which bring benefit to their company. That's pretty obvious. And in a lot of magazines and news people and papers, you can read about it, that maybe a Porsche is not the right car to go to IKEA and buy a wardrobe. And it's the same with IoT. IoT can do a lot, but there are use cases, we have to admit. It's not the right to use IoT, use something else. The other point is the lack of I IoT knowledge. And it's not about this deep knowledge about the technology itself. It's more the knowledge about IoT in general. What is IoT? And of course, these people, the business users, are not interested in technology. Think about the accountant in your company. If he is interested in IoT, he would have become an IoT expert. But he's an accountant because he prefers this. And we have to accept that these people don't want to care about IoT, what is it? how to use it. They simply want a solution to solve the daily problem. And this brings up the third point. Their daily problems need tailored solutions. If we come around the corner with another IT system, another IoT platform and say, well, use this thing. This is also nice. Beside your seven software products you're using daily, here's the eighth, use this one as well. That's what they don't want. If the solution, the new process is taking 10 minutes longer a day, um, then they don't want this solution because it's costing them their time. They want a solution tailored to their needs, to their workflows. And we have to admit there are dedicated IoT solutions for one use case, which can solve this problem, but they are not flexible. And on the other hand, we have generic IoT platforms, for example, which can cover a lot of use cases, but they are not really tailored to these single needs of uh, business users in different departments. So companies still believe in the potential of IoT and the game-changing uh, role of IoT. And we identified some challenges. So the question is, how can we tackle these challenges? Uh, and our solution from the Gimondo side is use the digital twin. Well, and then the first question is, what is a digital twin, obviously? A digital twin is actually the representation of a physical asset in the digital world. Think about a physical asset like a container, a trash bin, a water pipe, uh, or whatever. And this asset is represented in your software as one object. And all the information belonging to this object, devices, data, uh, manuals, and whatever, are located in the same place. The concept of a digital twin first time uh, came up in engineering, where they use it for simulations, for example, at NASA. And we at Digimondo, thought about how can we use this idea of the digital twin for IoT and integrate it in our IoT platform, NIOTA. And we came up with four major points we adopted for IoT. First of all, it's about combining all the data which belongs to one object in one place, but not from the technology point of view where you're grouping your devices by the type of device or uh, by the runtime or whatever. It's about grouping them from the user's point of view. And now if you step into the role of a facility manager, what is the, the object he's understanding? A facility man manager understands his facility. He understands the rooms in there. So we need to build up a hierarchy and a structure where each digital twin represents, for example, a room, and they all together represent one building. And everything he wants to know and needs is stored in this one place from his point of view. It's also about decoupling. What I mentioned previous, uh, previously um, about exchanging a sensor, that's what we've realized in the digital twin in Neota. The historical data is not bound to a device, it's bound to the digital twin, which means you can exchange the device in case it's broken or it's stolen or whatever, and just link the new device to this new data point. And this gives the business users for, for doing data analytics or whatever, the possibility to keep the whole history of data without changing any IDs or linking or something in the background. It's always working. If you exchange one device, just link it to the digital twin. All the history of data is stored at the digital twin. Third point is integration. We are not focusing on IoT alone. We also kept our platform open for other technologies, other protocols. 
And these are other IoT technologies beside LoRaWAN, as well as protocols coming from the IT world. Think about an SAP integration and so on. Existing products and software solutions which are used in the companies for 20 or even 30 years, as well as storing different types of information. The digital twin can store IoT-related data, LoRaWAN devices data, as well as attachments like manuals, maintenance instructions, responsible contact persons, and so on and so forth. So everything is integrated in one place. It's not like not only receiving and storing this data in the digital twin, it's also the other way around. The digital twin can forward or provide this information to any other system. So when you integrate your IT system and the uh, IoT solution, you know everything I need for my IT system is stored in the digital twin. I can request it at this point. And it's also about automation and not automation like we know from many other platforms or other places where you have a long list of rules and you somehow need to figure out which rule is doing what and belongs where. It's a simple solution on the digital twin level to write rules. So each of the business department can write with little clicks their own rules and they know, okay, the rule for this conference room uh, is stored at the conference room. I can simply click, drag and drop my solution and write a rule like if the window is open and the heating is on, please send an alert to a colleague that he should close the window or whatever. These are the four major points um, for the digital twin, what we identified as important for IoT. And with this solution, it's not only that you have something easy to use for business users, they can click around and build up their environment as they know it from their daily life. They can use IoT with little knowledge about IoT itself. It's also the basic, the fundamental of the future of IoT from our point of view. With this basic infrastructure, you can start setting up tailored solutions for dedicated departments. Think about your logistics department in your company or in your organization who wants to have a special dashboard to monitor the position of all your container, containers worldwide. They can build up digital twins for each of the container, link all the sensors installed in the container. They can build up production plans or facilities, whatever, and link them together, write rules if the container is in one place, please inform the colleague or catch the order number of the IT system, link it to the container itself. Just a few examples how to build up dedicated solutions for, for your customers. So I could talk for hours about it, but unfortunately I'm limited in time. Um, and let's sum it up what the digital twin is about for LoRaWAN. Actually, we figured out at Digimondo that the digital twin is this missing piece which bridges the gap between the IoT world and the IT world. The IoT world, which is more using, uh, looking for a solution, how can I maintain and extend an existing infrastructure during my rollout? Not like a POC with a limited time, the rollout is forever and I need a way to quickly maintain it, keep an overview, extend it with a little effort. And on the other side, for the business users, we figured out the digital twin is the, the solution for their daily problems. They don't need IoT knowledge, they simply can click together their solution and use it everywhere, integrated with existing environments with a little effort, without having this deep knowledge, what is sometimes needed in, in other solutions. So to sum it up, the digital twin is actually the, the bridge we, are, we have been missing in the past to, um, to solve the problem from the IoT proof of concept to the IoT rollout. Yeah, I hope I could catch your interest. And if you want to get more, uh, get to know more, let's visit our Digimondo's booth here at the Things Conference and simply ask for the next generation of IoT platforms. My colleagues are really happy to help you and show you more about it. Thanks a lot, enjoy the conference, and I hope you like this keynote. Bye-bye.